Hey, what's up, YouTube photographer Rons for Monis Photographer, and today we'll complete another retouching tutorial. And in this tutorial, today I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings for your mixer brush tool. I've been getting so many questions about how to best set your mixer brush tool when you're going to start blending the skin tones during your frequency separation. And this tutorial is for you guys and those who would like to learn about eye and teeth whitening and learning about global dodging and burning or skin sculpting or yeah contouring this is also your tutorial and yeah let's kick in and we start retouching this image and this image is for a friend of mine she's called agatha and now we're going to start be, uh, retouching this image using frequency separation and this tutorial is going to be a full tutorial and it's going to be an in-depth tutorial about frequency separation unlike the previous tutorials where i've been starting from camera row uh, for this tutorial, I just decided to yeah, import the JPEG image direct into my Photoshop and you're going to be touching this image. So stay around and thank you guys for subscribing. And if at all you're watching this, tuto uh, this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. So I'm going to take you slow because I was talking fast. So uh, you start by duplicating the background layer. But before we can do that, let's first of all uh, this define or describe frequency separation frequency separation is basically a skin retouching technique or method that develop, it divides the image into two that is the low frequency that contains the skin tones and the colors and the high frequency that contains the skin textures or maybe a skin powers and the rest of uh, the facial details so basically that is frequency separation for you so it our uh, frequency separation enables us to work on the textures alone and the colors alone so that we can create a beautiful image at the end of the retouching process so let's kick in and start doing the frequency separation so remember we said frequency separation we have to create two layers so you can just drag and drop right here and i'm using an older version of photoshop that is photoshop cc 2017 so that's how you duplicate. So you're going to create two layers, or you can just click Ctrl J on the keyboard to create these two layers. Remember, African separation contains these two layers. That's why we have created these two uh, layers right here, as you can see. So like we said, skin tones or the colors are usually below the textures. So we're going to name this a uh, low frequency. Or you can, some people call it uh, skin tones or color. So click enter and double click right here. And you are going to rename this to high frequency. High frequency. Or we can just name it a texture. So whichever word you come across, you shouldn't get confused. So for frequency separation to be effective, uh, we're going to first of all deactivate this so we're going to work on this slow layer because we want this layer to only contain uh, the colors and the skin tones for this very image and in order to do that come right here to filter then come to blur and come to gaussian blur so when you click this uh, make sure you put your radius all the way down so you can zoom out so you look for the area that seems to have more skin textures than the rest of the skin so for this case we are going to use the nose area as you can see so we are going to slide this until we are seeing no textures yeah the skin texture on the nose area so we are going to do that by moving at uh, this tiny slider like this So make sure you move it, but you can still recognize the facial structures like the eyes and the lips and the nose. So I think at around six we have, we are no longer seeing the skin textures on the nose area. So just come and click OK. So for this layer right now, we only have uh, the colors or the skin tones for this layer, for our low frequency layer. Now for the high frequency layer, we are going to remove these 
colors and the skin tones from this layer so that you can only remain with the textures so in order to do that come to your high frequency or texture layer and now activate it by clicking on the eye icon right here then come to image and come right down here to apply image so when you click apply image this is going to be your default for uh, the apply image as you can see you get this dialog box and remember we are going to be removing uh, the skin textures from the low frequency or the color layer so in order to do that we have to come and choose that very layer the color layer so we are going to be subtracting the textures from the color layer so come to the blending and look for subtract so when you click on subtract make sure you feed in these details opacity should be at 100 percent uh invert should not be selected or checked uh the scale is 2 and offset 128 because 128 is uh, is 50 percent gray or half of 256 and 256 is like all the colors we have so in the adobe so after you have put in these settings scale to offset 128 and opacity at 100 click ok and make sure the previews are marked or checked so just come and click ok so when you do click ok you zoom in and you can now see the textures and we are lacking the colors on this failure and it has turned out to be gray but remember we have lost out the image itself as you can see in this gray icon so in order to regain back our image we are going to come right here to the blending the blending mode and you're going to choose or select linear light so when you click on linear light you'll get back the image how it was initially before so we are going to select these two layers and put them in a group you can just drag and, and drop right here to the folder like icon put them in a group or you can just click ctrl or command g yeah just click ctrl or command g to put them in a group so we're going to rename this group a uh, frequency separation i'll abbreviate that so when you turn this on and off you, there should be no difference between the background or the original image and your frequency separation group you can see there is no difference at all meaning we have successfully separated the image into two layers or we have successfully done our frequency separation on the image but that is not all we are now going to be learning about skin retouching for this image in order to bring out the beauty of our model and she really has a nice skin so we are going to just improve or work on that skin to make it quite or a little bit better so we're going to click on this icon to drop down and we are going to select the texture or high frequency layer and remember we are going to be using a mixer brush tool and in order to use the mixer brush tool really nice and well uh, you have to be knowing uh, where the skin tones are not transitioning really really well so what we are going to do right now uh the mixer brush tool enables us to blend those areas that don't have smooth transitions uh, in the skin tones and it also helps us to flatten out the blemishes or pimples that may be uh on the skin so when it comes to removing them uh, you'll have less work to do so that is the advantage of using the mixer brush tool and it also helps us to blend in the makeup or the foundation that may not have been blended into the skin well so that's why you have to learn how to use your mixer brush tool for almost all your retouching using frequency separation so make sure your texture or high frequency layer is selected and come to the adjustments and create a black and white adjustment layer uh, the reason for doing this is because we want to look for the areas that don't have those smooth skin tone transitions and in order to see that just count the red channel and turn it all the way down so right now you can see 
the bumpiness right here you can see right here we have a shadow that is not meant to be here so you can see we have bumpiness here and around the nose area then we have a shadow right here which is not meant to be there because this is meant for the highlight so you can see a bumpiness on the neck area and on the arm so we are going to select the mixer brush tool and there now this is why you have to be attentive guys let me get your attention and when you're using the mixer brush tool or setting it up this is what you really have to follow come and under the brushes so just right click and look for mixer brush tool but mine i decided to put it out of this and this is my mixer brush tool so we're going to start setting up the mixer brush tool that is going to be effective during our skin retouching and remember we want the image to retain as much naturalness or as much texture as possible so come right here and make sure it is a clean brush that is the first step drop down make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this box here is selected uh, the reason for selecting that box is because we want the brush to clean to clean up every time we uh, we are trying to blend the skin tones that are not transitioning really well make sure you have a low wetness because i prefer to use a wetness below nine and below because i want to retain as much skin texture as possible for my models then the load is at 75 the mix at 90 and the flow i prefer the flow of 100 so make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected so basically that is my setting for the mixer brush tool so right now we're going to start blending or mixing those areas that don't have smooth skin tone transition and we're going to flatten them and make sure they blend really really nicely and well and in order to do that remember the skin tones are on the low frequency layer so you're going to come here and we select as a low frequency or color layer or some people call it the skin tone layer so we are going to zoom in a little bit like that so we're going to start blending the unevenness in the skin tones and for increasing and decreasing the brush size you have to use the uh, left and the right brackets on the keyboard in order to do that so you can see and when you're mixing make sure you mix the highlights alone the mid tones alone and at the shadows alone and when you're doing your mixing make sure you don't over mix a particular area like so so much because you're going to be doubling the effect of uh, this wetness i hope you guys can understand that so let's uh, blend uh, these particular highlights you can see i'm mixing the highlights alone right here you can see now this transition I'm just mixing it together so that it can really uh, blend in nice and well. Then do this. and So let's see the progress so far for the image. Turn off the black and white or our hair player. You can see the before and the after. Before, after, you can see uh, the effect it has already made to the image. So come back and activate the black and red and make sure you're still selected on the low frequency or color layer and then just going to continue uh blending you can see we have some shadows right here so we're just going to blend uh, those areas really nice and well in order to have smooth and nice skin tone transitions so let's uh do this too we have shadows right here we blend that and come right here and just blend that too so we have this highlight here so just blend the highlight alone like you're seeing i'm doing because when you do this uh your image will not become flat that's why you have to keep uh within the borders or the boundaries of uh, those areas you're trying to blend or mix using the mixer brush tool so you're going to also blend uh, this nose area. You can see these shadows. As you see, I'm remaining within the boundaries or the borders of uh, the shadows on the nose area. And I'm going to come this side too. And I'm going to blend uh, this side too. 
like you're seeing so we have a highlight on the nose area so i'm also going to uh blend uh, this highlight right here then also blend right in the middle of the eyebrows so let's see a progress because we want to see how we are progressing with our skin retouching for this uh, beautiful model so that's the before and the after before after so if at all you really have enough time you can take your time using a mixer brush tool alone but in this tutorial i'm going to be sharing with you guys uh the most efficient way of uh, fine tuning your images uh after using the mixer brush tool even if you don't uh, spend so so much time trying to uh, do the blending so for those areas you may have missed out uh, while using a mixer brush tool you can use the method i'm about to share with you guys uh, in order to uh, fine tune uh, the image or your retouching and to fill up those areas that may have been missed while you're using the mixer brush tool so stay tuned as uh, we progress with this uh, retouching tutorial so like I said, we are going to keep on checking on the progress. So that's the before, after, before, after. You can see how we have gotten rid of this darkness. So you can as well work uh, without uh, the pearl player, if at all you really, really are confident with your site. But if you're not confident with your site, you can add chill and uh, opt for the black and white or the hair player. To guide you throughout so let's uh, try to blend the neck area and you know the problem with most retouchers they tend to forget uh, working on the neck area or the chest area so let's do that because we wouldn't want to be called uh, those other retouchers so we have to be different so let's uh, do this you can see we are just trying to blend uh these areas or the skin tones for the neck area of our very beautiful model and guys if you're watching don't forget to subscribe this channel because uh, it motivates me to keep on creating more and more helpful content that is going to improve on your retouching game and your photography in general so Let's now blend the arm area. You can see uh, the magic the mixer brush tool is really, really uh, making on this very, very image. So make sure you just uh, don't be in a hurry because I uh, wouldn't want uh, really bad results from our uh, retouching after spending so much time and you produce uh, results that are not nice and appealing enough so make sure you do take your time while retouching so for the neck area we can just turn off that you can see the before and after before after so let's try to do a little bit uh, of blending there so you can see now before after so this is just by using the mixer brush tool and right now i'm going to share with you guys uh this secret or trick to refining your image after using a mixer brush tool and that is just first of all delete the black and white layer just drag it to this trash icon or the dustbin and still select your color all of frequency layer because we are working with the skin tones so get your lasso tool and make sure uh, feathering is 21 pixels and anti-alias is selected like that so we are going to select uh, the skin of the model like this make a selection just select only and only uh, the skin area of uh, the model like that make sure you resist from selecting the eyebrows or hair so we have now selected the skin of our model come right here to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur once again so remember this was the radius we initially used uh when we were when we were kind of uh starting up african separation 
so what we are going to do we are going to move this radius yeah until we see the best skin texture for our model so we are going to move it yeah like that until we see uh, the best skin texture for the model i think that is fine for this very image you can see at around 20 pixels we have the best skin texture for our image so we are going to be applying this for the rest of the image and before you can do that let me share with you guys uh, this is like a hack for you guys it is like a trick so remember we had the radius of six so what i found out a while back is when you multiply six by three and add two to the value uh, you get the best skin texture for your image so multiply six by three you get 18 and add two to the value which makes it 20 so i'll just type in 20 and you can see we still have the same results for our skin so just click ok and now we're going to select uh, the rest of uh, the skin and make sure follow the shapes the way light is falling on the image and right click apply gaussian blur select there too right click click on gaussian blur and if i told, I told you feel the effect is too much let me show you guys what i mean you can reduce on uh, the effect so right click click on gaussian blur if at all you feel it is too much for your liking, click Shift Control F on the keyboard and I reduce on the opacity of that effect on the particular area. But for purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave everything at 100. Yeah, because I want to see uh, you guys to really see the effect of this uh, tutorial and the difference we are trying to achieve so you can see that so remember we haven't applied the effect right here so you can see the shapes i'm making are following that particular area so just come and also apply it right here we are like fine tuning the areas we may have missed out and you can't see the areas you missed out without applying the effect on the overall image of uh, all the overall skin of the model you can see there so you just come to the shadows right here and right click apply the Gaussian blur select right here right click click on Gaussian blur so I think that is fine so let's see the progress so far so this is the before and the after before after you can see the difference uh, it has made already so remember we haven't dealt with the blemishes yet so if at all you feel you want to apply the effect here you can do that but remember to reduce the effect or the opacity of uh, the gaussian blur on that particular area so we are going to remove the blemishes click on the texture or high frequency layer because it contains the blemishes or uh, the pimples so for blemish removal when i'm doing frequency separation i prefer to use uh, the clone stamp tool this is the clone stamp tool so i'm going to show you guys how it works so we're going to zoom in because right now we are dealing with uh, removing those blemishes from our model skin so you click or hold uh, click and hold down the alternate button yeah hold down the alternate button and click on a clean area and just paint over the, uh, the area you want to clean up so hold down alternate button hold it hold it down like that sample from a clean area click on a, that clean area that's what i mean by sampling and now paint over the pimple you want to remove or the blemish so basically that is how i will use the clone stamp tool uh, while removing uh, those pimples or blemishes from uh, the skin while we are trying to do our skin retouching and you can as well 
do it for the lips and uh, if at all you have the time and I think I should do a tutorial about uh, retouching the lips because yeah people have been asking for it and I'm just here to also do the delivery because I want to share knowledge and we grow together because I uh, usually when I'm sharing uh, with you guys I also be practicing and uh, learning together with you guys I discover new tricks and techniques so it is not basically you learning from this channel I'm also learning uh, with you guys so let's uh, remove these tiny blemishes because uh, almost 50% of your retouching depends on uh, the amount of blemishes you're able to remove while you're doing your skin retouching so make sure you're really careful uh, with the blemish uh, removal for your images so I'm going to try to reduce on these uh, lines on the eye so you can see I'm now removing those skin imperfections or the pimples from uh, our beautiful model skin I think that is fine so if at all you really have enough time you can just continue doing uh, it for the rest of uh, the day if at all you want uh, the most perfect results from your skin retouching but as I said, this model really had a nice uh, skin and we are also going to be color grading this image and this is like a bonus for you guys who have been watching this tutorial up to this very very step or stage because I know some people just jump off along the way and maybe because uh, it is really monotonous when I'm trying to uh, do so much of uh, the talking so let me just do this so you can as well come to the lip area and uh, you do you fix these areas to alternate click and just fill in on uh, these areas that had less uh, lipstick maybe it has gotten off so basically you can use a clone stamp for really really so many things so let's see the before and after so that's the before and the after before after so we're just going to do a little bit of fine tuning to this image using uh, the global dodging and burning technique and we are going to be using the curves so come right down here and create uh, the curves adjustment layers remember dodging when you're doing dodging and burning will be enhancing the highlights and the shadows that may have gotten flattened or lost when we are doing the skin retouching so that's what we want to regain back so first of all we are going to darken make sure you make a midpoint and drag all the way down to darken so we have one fight this effect click ctrl or command i on the keyboard so remember darkening is burning so we name that burn come back and create a curves adjustment layer sorry i created levels so i'll delete that come create curves and this time around brighten make sure this is selected click ctrl i to hide that effect and we're going to name that uh, dodge i don't know why i put double d okay that's dodge so we're going to put these two in a group ctrl or command g to put them in the group so i'm going to name this D and B for dodge and burn. Hope you guys are not bothered by that. Now we are going to create another black and white layer like this. And this time around, we are also going to darken it still because we want to see where to dodge well and where to burn. So, in order to see that clearly, Make sure you turn off the frequency separation to see where initially your shadows and highlights were for your image. So make sure we're going to start by dodging. Uh, come and get your brush. Make sure the opacity is at 9 and the flow at 100. And make sure white is on the foreground. So you can just toggle by getting white on top. Or you can just click X on the keyboard to toggle 
that's the shortcut for switching these two and in order to get black and white again just click on these two boxes so remember when you're dodging you dodge the highlight so come and we have a highlight right here so we're just going to paint over that highlight so we have a highlight right here then we have a highlight right here on on the chin area of the model like that this highlight right here then on the collar bones of the model so i think we are done with the dodging so we are going to burn the shadows so come and now paint over the shadows like that then come right here and just enhance so we're just more uh, we are doing just more of enhancing uh, these shadows so turn back your frequency separation layer on and turn off the black and white to see the progress we have done so as the before and after before after you can see the difference it has made to uh, the overall image so we're going to delete the black and white layer and right now we are going to do the color grading before we can do the eye and teeth whitening for the model so we're going to come right here and first of all add contrast to the image and i prefer to use legacy for this case and i'm going to pump up my contrast to around two and i'm going to come to my levels and click levels and i'm going to move this slightly up to around 94 and after that i'm also going to come right here down and come to selective color and i want my blacks to really really be dark for this image so drop down and look for blacks and now darken uh, the blacks a little bit i think at around three will be fine i think this is fine and beautiful then i'm also going to come back to a uh, selective color once again right here selective color and i'm going to come to uh, the red channel i'm going to pump up my oranges my yellow sorry a little bit more then i feel my image is lacking a little bit more of contrast i'm going to come back to brightness and, and contrast and i'm going to add a uh, contrast but this time around with no legacy in it so i'm going to pump it up to around nine i think that is fine so i'm going to put this in a group because i want to be uniform ctrl g so i'm going to name it color color grade so that's the before color grading and after before and after you can see my image is now getting richer and richer so what we're going to do we are also going to be doing eye and teeth whitening for this image so we're going to create a stamp visible layer by clicking shift Control, alternate e on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer shift alternate Control e on the keyboard to create a sample visible layer and we are also going to uh, make a copy of that layer by clicking Control or command j on the keyboard come to filter and come to camera row filter like that and we are also going to do the eye and teeth whitening so zoom into the eyes and get your adjustment brush and uh, make sure the highlight is at a temperature is negative 29 the tint is at 71 the reason for temperature is moving towards the cool area is because we want to remove the warm tones from the eyes uh, the highlights at five the whites at four and all the others are left to their defaults so exposure is also supposed to be at zero then saturation remember we are dealing with removing colors from the eye area Ex uh, saturation is negative 74 and just come and paint over the white area remember we are only painting over the white area remember if you paint over 
the skin area it is going to uh, desaturate or remove color from that particular area so make sure you only paint over only and only uh, the white area of uh, the eye like that I think you can see the difference it is making and come to the teeth area and do the teeth whitening too because this is more of a beauty portrait so just uh, do that I think this is the most effective uh, method according to me for the eye and teeth whitening because I don't go through the trouble of uh, creating curves and all that and inverting and painting because these settings remain after you have applied them so every time you apply camera roll uh, you'll still ha be having these settings for your adjustment brush so, so you just have to just paint over the eye and teeth so I think that is fine so let's do that too I think you can see we have whitened the model's teeth I think that is fine and beautiful so just click OK so you can see the before after before after if at all you feel it is too much for your liking just come and turn down the opacity of uh, the eye and teeth whitening so uh, this tutorial has been about skin retouching and has uh, been about frequent separation and let's see the before and after so that's the before after before after you can see that and i got a question about how i do save my images in photoshop after retouching so i save my image i just export them so come to file export export as and just click there because every time sometimes we tend to retouch images and they tend to change color every time we put them on a different device so make sure you click export as instead of save as so that you embed all the adobe colors into your image so come to format and click on J jpg or jpeg and now come right down and click make sure these two convert srgb and embed color profile is selected and click on export all so when you click on export all to bring for you where you have to save your image in your computer or your storage device so this story has been about frequency fashion thank you for watching i'm ronix from Ronix photography and i'll see you in yet another retouching tutorial